Hey what's up guys, welcome to the fourth tutorial of creating music for video games and I really recommend you that you check the last tutorials which I left the links in the description if you want to create a powerful audio manager for your game and today we are going to see how to create core functions of our audio manager and at around the 7 minute and 10 seconds we see how to play music, instruments or sounds randomly but first it would be cool if we didn't have to add the audio sources to our game object via the script that is attached to the game object. So let's create a function that is going to add an audio source. I'm gonna call it add tracks and it's going to receive the number of tracks that we want to create and the game object where the audio sources will be attached. So let's say if number of tracks different than zero, we create a loop that is going to loop until it reaches the number of tracks we want and we are going to create a new object from the track class. And say that the id is equal to i and that the audio source is going to be equal to the one we are going to attach to our game object. So this basically creates a track and also creates and attaches an audio source to the game object. And we are going to add these tracks to a list of tracks. So we can go ahead and create a list of track class, call it track list, equal to new list of track class. And now we can add the track we created to our track list. Ok, so now let's create another public function called track settings. So we can configure our track. And it's going to receive the number of the track, an audio mixer, a string called audio group, and we're gonna see in a moment what this is, what these two variables are, and a float for the track volume, and a boolean called loop. So now we want to assign the track to our audio mixer that we are going to receive and we can do this in the following way. We use the list of tracks and pass the track we want to access, then we access the audio source of that track and now we can say that the output audio mixer group is going to be equal to the audio mixer we are going to receive dot find matching groups and we pass the string audio group. And before going to see what this is, let's say the track list dot track volume is equal to track volume and that the loop is equal to loop. Okay, so let's also change the play music function to the new system and we are going to receive the number of the track instead of the game object. And now we pass the track number to the track list and we can access the audio source and say play one shot the audio clip that we are going to receive and now the volume also comes from the track list volume. And now in the FPS sound script we can add two tracks. We also need to set up the track by saying which track we want to configure and in this case it's track 0 and before we add the audio mixer we need to add the using unity engine dot audio add the public audio mixer that we are going to assign in the inspector and let's go right now to the inspector and create a folder called audio mixes and in it let's press with the right mouse and add an audio mixer. And if you press two times, the audio mixer window appears. And if not, you can find it in the window. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just focus on adding a child to the main mixer in the group section and call it music. And below it, add two more channels, one for the melody and one for the drums. And in case you have separate instruments, you can create a channel for each one. 
Now back to the script. We can already add the main mix like this and say it's going to be in the group called Melody that we have just created. So now you start to understand what is going on. We are going to add each track to their respective channel in the main mix. And now we want to say that the volume of the track is 0.5 and we also want to say that the track is going to be looped, so we say true. And we can copy and paste this to configure the track 1 and say they belong to the group drums in the main mixer. And now the great thing is that the play music doesn't need a game object, it only needs the track number and which audio clip is going to play. So, in the track 0, which is for the melody, we play the Ableton Melody 0. And in the track 1, which are for the drums, we play the Ableton Drums 0. So, in the inspector, let's add the main mix that we have created and press play. And we can see a couple of things. We can see that the sound manager correctly added the audio sources to the game object and play the melody and the drums for each one. And each audio source is also connected to their respective channel in the main mixer, which is amazing because we can add effects. And we are going to see that in a couple of tutorials later. So the track 01 is for the melody and the track 1 is the drums, as you can see. I hope you didn't understand why we created this main mix. It's quite useful, you are going to see. And be careful, because every edit you make in the play mode, it's going to be recorded and going to take effect when you stop the play mode. So, wouldn't it be cool if we could choose if a track plays music or sounds randomly? And for that to happen, we need to go to the sound manager script and in the play music function, Let's say we also want to receive a list of audio clips, an integer called minimum set to minus 2 and a maximum set to minus 2 as well. And since we want these parameters to be optional, let's say the audio clip is null and the list is also null. That way if we only want to send an audio clip, we don't need to say that the, the list is null. Right here, we are going to be able to say that if we want to play a clip one time or loop it. And down here, we assume that if we send a list, it's because we want to play randomly, loop it or not. Because if we want to play from a list without being random, we iterate through the list and send as an audio clip. So let's say that if audio clip is not null and list audio clip is null, and if the audio source is not playing, then we want to keep this line and down here we say if track list open bracket track dot loop, we need to save the length of the clip. So let's create a private static float called clip length. And down here we say that the clip length is equal to the clip length of the audio clip we are going to send and then loop and then we loop which we are going to see in a moment how we do it and for the playlist we almost say the same thing but this time we verify if the audio clip is null and the list of audio clips is not null so since we want to randomize this we create an integer called index which is going to be equal to random dot range between the minimum and the maximum that we are going to send. So this is going to be the range between the elements of the list that we want to play. And if index equals minus one, then it means we don't want sound to be played. And that's why we said minus two in the header of the function. So now we play the music from the list of audio clips that we are going to send and we pass to the list the index with the random number. And we save the clip length as well. Now, down here we say if the track is set to loop, then we want to loop. Okay, so now in the FPS sound script, we have to make a couple of changes since the play music is different. 
And for the melody, it keeps being the same. I don't want it to be random. But for the drums, I want some randomness. And I want to say that the audio clip is null first. And that we are going to send a, a playlist, which is the Ableton drums. And I want it to be from minus one, which means sometimes I don't want it to play, to two or three. After that, you can press play. And as you can hear this time, there were no sounds in the drums. Let's just send a log to the console when there is no sound and what music is playing. So let's write debug.log, no sound. And then down here, we also want to write debug.log playing plus list audio clip index. And in the FPS sound script, I'm gonna change the melody to FL melody and to FL drums just to be different. And now if you press play, you need to choose the melody 02 and the drum 03. Now let's stop and press play again. And as you can see, this is working very well. You can become really creative with this if you have several drums and melody at the same tempo and with the same length. This can become quite powerful. And it will become even more powerful in the next tutorials. And we will see how to implement the fade in and the fade out functions. And then we will loop everything and we will see how to interact with the enemy nearby. So stick around guys and subscribe for weekly updates on game development and see you in the next tutorial.